Hey, today I'm working on a surround sound system that's going in the ceiling. It's a 5.1 surround sound, so there'll be a there'll be five speakers in the ceiling and uh, one subwoofer down on the floor. And these are the speakers I'm going to be using. They have uh, spring-loaded terminals on the back, and I'm going to be connecting uh, wire to that. What I'm going to use is this RG58, mostly because I have. Uh, about a thousand feet of it and I have no further use for it at this time and so I'm going to use it to run my speaker cables and what I'm going to do I've seen a lot of people uh, where they'll take the center conductor of one cable and cross it over to the shield of the other and uh, get some kind of noise cancellation going on with that or something but in my case I don't think that's uh, that's a benefit at all for driving a speaker especially a low wattage one like this is about a 50 watt speaker and uh, the other reason I'm not doing it is, uh, there's two more reasons. One is uh, that when you terminate the ends of the wires together like that, you end up with a bit of a cable management problem because you, you've got the cable tied together on this end and it's going into a cabinet. And before long, unless you sheathe this cable together as a twin all the way up as it comes into the cabinet, there, there's a chance this stuff is going to get all tangled up and it'll be kind of a nightmare to keep up with. And the other reason is uh, when you combine the, uh, the center conductor and the shield with the, uh, the positive and negative going, you know, in the same cable, that it greatly increases the chance of something shorting out there's, because there's four, four areas where it could do it on each end of the cable. And uh, I mean, technically it's, you know, not a big deal, but it's just, uh, I don't see any benefit to crossing over. I'm just going to use one cable for the positive and another cable for the negative. And so I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some crimp on ferrules and I want to make it so that they will terminate into the speaker and not give me any problems down the road. So I'll get started on that right now. There's a closer look at the speaker. These are the uh, spring loaded terminals. And this is the cable I'm going to go into it. So what I'm going to do is strip back about an inch of the cable with this this rusty razor. Yeah, I'm trying not to cut into the braid. I just want to cut the the jacket. And I'm going to go down the side of it there like that. And peel the jacket away. Now I'm going to unbraid it right along the top here. Generally this RG58 is used in uh, communications or ethernet and it's, it's rated, it's a 50, they say it's a 50 ohm impedance but you know that's measured at a, you know, in the megahertz and gigahertz. So uh, when, you, when they say it's a 50 ohm impedance it has really no relevance in the audio uh, range of frequencies. It's really... Uh, it's really not a 50 ohm cable when the when the audio is uh, involved because the audio is such a low frequency. So now I'm twisting the uh, the, the shield here. I'm going to take some strippers and uh, strip back the center conductor. It's, again, it's 20 gauge, so I'll, I'll find the 20 gauge slot on my strippers there. Strip that back. So there's the center conductor that's uh, solid and, and there's the shield. What I want to do is put a ferrule on that, a crimp on ferrule. And like this. It's easier to use the flared in part. I'm going to run that all the way up like that and then crimp it. So now I've got this uh, little bit sticking out the end. I'm just going to trim that. And so now what I want to do is just solder just the tip of this together, not the whole thing. I don't. If you solder the whole thing, if the solder wicks all the way back, 
it, it could actually encourage it to break. So what you want to do is just solder the, uh, just the tip. Got an iron warming up here. And I'm going to bring my uh, solder over there like that. So I can see the solder wicking along it now. Uh, that's all I'm going to apply right there, just on the end. And that will ensure that there's a very good connection. But the solder hasn't gone all the way to the back to encourage it to break. And so then the next thing I would do, it will uh, terminate in here on the speaker. Just like that. And that's a pretty good connection. It allows it, to, without solder on this end, it, it allows it to flex a little bit and not break. If you let the solder get all the way up in there, you might have a problem. So that's what I need to do. I'm going to be, uh, I've got a lot of these to prepare. Like I said, there's five of these speakers in the, in the system, in the ceiling. And uh, got a lot of cable to run. And so another step in the process is to identify which cable is going to be the positive. And so what I do is use a band of heat shrink tubing. And identify one of the cables as positive. And I do that on the other end of the cable too. And so, I'll also label the cables. And this is how they will be installed like that. And I'll have a label on, uh, on this pair, on this side, it won't matter that much because uh, the speakers are so far apart. I'll know which is left and right, front and back and subwoofer and all that. But on the other end where it's going into the cab into the cabinet, I will actually just put plain language uh, left front, right front uh, on the cable together because uh, they will get, uh, it'll be hard to keep up with so many cables, I think. So then the cables will just be uh, slid into the speaker terminals like that. And uh, that's how I'm going to be terminating it.